So first off, I'd like to say, I guess, two things. One, I honestly believe that Guillermo del Toro and Bradley Cooper could make a pretty decent Indiana Jones film. I think that both of these guys together, Guillermo directing, and then Bradley Cooper starring as Indiana Jones, I feel like it could possibly work. Just an idea. It'd be kind of cool to let it happen instead of letting this new Indiana Jones happen (laughs) with the Phoebe Waller-Bridge Jones. Um, but watching this movie definitely kind of gave me the feeling of Indiana Jones. And I was like, you know what? I would be, I would be down to see that. I think that they could honestly do a good job. Um, but anyway, besides that, besides the point. Uh, so when I was a kid, I used to really enjoy carnivals. Uh, I hadn't been to that many, but I really did enjoy them. I went to Vegas, uh, and went to Circus Circus. I hadn't really been back in years and I had went not that long ago and, you know, got to see, we got to see some shows, had drinks. It was, it was great being an adult child <laughs> watching uh, circus shows while with a beer in your hands. Um, and those memories and that fondness of circuses is probably why I was looking forward to and really enjoyed Nightmare Alley, the, uh, the new film with Camille, uh, the new film directed by Camille Del Toro, starring uh, Bradley Cooper and a pretty good uh, other list of people. Um, minus, uh, Tony Collette. I'm sorry, Tony Collette. I just, I just don't, she's just not the best, but I did, I did actually like her in this movie. Like, I don't really care for her as an actress, but I actually did like her performance in this movie. Like, it was very, like, she was a very matter of fact character. I loved it. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, Nightmare Alley, uh, stars Bradley Cooper as this man named Stan, who pretty much is like, you know, down in his luck. He's a wanderer. And he ends up at this carnival, you know, ends up getting a job as a carny. And the likes of William Defoe is the is the the, the carnival operator, the, the the leader of the carnival, pretty cool. And pretty much, you know, he ends up learning some tricks of the trade of what the carnies do, pretty much how they make money by swindling people, kind of like TikTok today, but, you know, making money, uh, or uh, not, not kind of like TikTok and OnlyFans today, but, you know, swindling people for the money and stuff, so he gets pretty good at it, and he ends up leaving, he ends up, you know, falling in love with this woman there, and they leave together to, to start a better life with this newfound knowledge he has, and the knowledge is pretty much he becomes like a clairvoyant, you know, he becomes like tele- uh, telepathic, with, you know, he can t- talk to the dead and stuff, but obviously he can't really talk to the dead. He's not like a real, he's not, he didn't like, you know, gain telepathic powers. He, it's just this style of uh, vocal cues and hand gestures and, you know, uh, react uh, uh, reactions and stuff like that. Like that would just give you hints to, you know, colors or code words or items or stuff like that to make you, make it, make you give the perception that you're like, you know, reading someone's mind or being able to see, you know, what's not being seen. It is really cool because remember, this whole movie takes place in like the 1940s. So people were really wowed back in that time where they actually, it didn't really take much to like, you know, wow an entire crowd versus people that actually like, you know, were were non, fully non, or I guess that were skeptical or no, that were completely not skeptical and just like open to like every interpretation of things. So at that point in time, you know, he just was making it big and uh, pretty much he ends up uh, crossing paths with the wrong people and just kind of like humiliating in a sense the wrong people. And, you know, the whole theme of the movie was that, you know, he shouldn't like you shouldn't lie. Right. You shouldn't deceive. And that's pretty much what you're doing. And you never you can never believe your own lie, because the minute you start believing the things you're telling, you know, you are becoming a con man or you're becoming, you know, uh, you're using that power that, that not, it's not a power, but you're using that ability that you're able to, to, to learn for evil. And, you know, it, it can, it can have consequences that, um, but yeah, so it was, it was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it. You, you gotta check it out. But like, like I said, I was, uh, when I, when this movie came out, I mean, yeah, I'm in the carnivals and stuff, but it was Gamilo del Toro, you know? So I was really thinking it was going to be like a crazy horror movie and it wasn't, it was more psychological. So it's just a lot of like, it's it's just it's pretty good you know it, it's it deals a lot with more it deals de- dived a lot more uh into realism than i thought than in fiction and stuff and apparently this is based off like a book so i have to read the book now but the book is the same difference of you know dealing with the 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 uh underground carnival life of you know just literally swindling and being a con artist like that and what these people go through and i i, I don't know this, this, i i'd be totally down to read the book um 
but this was definitely i know spider-man no way home is coming out and it, you know everyone's like oh that's great you gotta watch that and i mean it was you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie there but just saying nightmare alley you should check it out uh for the fact that like it's you know different something other than spider-man and it's actually a great original not original story but like fresh take on something that i think people could enjoy of like whoa man this guy's like you know it, i mean it is pretty cool if you could learn this little trick of ability it would be pretty rad but i don't, I don't think it would really obviously fly well in 2021 but it probably could if you did it well enough but you know, of course, back in the day, people were a lot more perceptive to stuff like that. So, I don't know. But, yeah, check it out. Nightmare Alley. It was, it was fantastic. Camilo Del Toro, fresh off of Antlers. And now this. I, that, that's another reason why I was expecting this to be a little heavier because of Antlers. But, you know, I still enjoyed it uh, about as equally, honestly. About as equally. But I, I would say I liked it more than Antlers. So, there you go. Still favorite movie of the year would have to be Last Night in Soho. But go check out Nightmare Alley. Um... And uh, thanks, Camilo de Toro. Fantastic. Apparently, this movie actually shut down back in March during the pandemic time. So, or the, the time of the great lockdown. So, hey, I'm glad the movie even made it out in, uh, at all. Or, like, at least it came out this year, not, like, next year. <laughs> yeah. But, all right. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. And uh, you guys have a fantastic rest of your evening.